uh, PyCon Canada, the first ever, uh, took place uh, two weeks ago. Uh, it was uh, two days in uh, Toronto, uh, followed by two days of sprints. <coughs> and Montreal Python was there. We represented the community. Uh, a lot of the organizers were there. Uh, Rory, uh, George, uh, Greg Ward, uh, Mathieu, and we were a group of 10, also uh, Simon. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Uh, PyCon Canada did some things really right. Uh, the diversity was great. You had a lot of female speakers and female attendees which uh, participated to the value of the conference. Uh, some of the best talks were given by women. That's something we should not forget. Uh, they had great speakers overall, like guest stars from the US, like Brandon Rhodes, Kenneth Reitz, and uh, Jessica McKellar. So people would take time to, to come give a talk about really uh, interesting subjects. And uh, the people you meet uh, uh, were really interesting, and uh, it was a great conference. Uh, so just a few talks you may want to see. Uh, GPIO on the Raspberry Pi with Python. Uh, Raspberry Pi is a, a micro uh, computer, uh, like the Arduino, but Arduino is a microcontroller. This one is a real microcomputer. And she made a five minute talk uh, demonstrating how you can have generic I.O. on the Raspberry Pi. And the end of her talk was uh, uh, having a, a detector, a Geiger counter with radioactive marbles. It was just amazing, uh, a lot of information to give you, uh, uh, to make you want to play with it, to buy one and to build something uh, just in five minutes. Fail faster, fail better, uh, about being shy and having code in public, and the key inside being, uh, it's not about avoiding failure, it's about rec recovering from error. It's also a really interesting 20 minute talk. And the last one, this one is, uh, High level stuff, a genetic algorithm. It's like you can solve a math problem or you know, like the, an enigma, a puzzle with many implementations, many algorithms, or you can write an algorithm which finds the best algorithm. That's a genetic algorithm, and this guy wrote a framework uh, so you can use it and have fun with it. Uh, longer talks. Uh, this one was really interesting. Uh, when you write code, you could lose sight of, uh, am I dealing with mice, kilometers, meters, meters per second, kilometers per hour? And with the quantities uh, module, which is on PyPI, you can append, annotate like units to your values. So you don't have just numbers with comments. You have objects which, which know what they are. And which is really cool at a conference that this guy reviewed like six or seven different modules on PyPI and found this one is the best. That's what you can get from a conference, from watching the talks, uh, return from experience, which are really great. So you don't have to do the research yourself. And just like this talk, avoiding the search hall of shame, how do you implement a good search feature on your website? All the tips are here. Extremely interesting. And some of the most interesting talks, uh, Python for humans. This guy wrote the request library when he saw that HTTP lib, you are lib, you are lib2. Uh, are not up to snuff in Python. They are not really nice to use and just sometimes are plain stupid. So he wrote a request, which is widely, widely used, and talked about over what's, over replacements, and how to have a good API design in general. And the closing keynote was by Fernando Perez, which is uh, the main author of IPython and one of the lead figures in the scientific Python community. And it just to make you dream like how Python was used to detect a supernova information. Uh, that was amazing. We stood up to upload twice and at the end an innovation because it would just blow your mind uh, just to, to dream and to see what cool stuff they're doing with science, but also concrete giveaways like what is the IPython notebook. If you think that IPython is just an alternative Python shell, you're wrong. The IPython notebook is an amazing tool to do workshop, to do research, and to have like something which is part static HTML with uh, like uh, code examples, but you can also run the code and reproduce the result. Uh, it's a really sucky description. You need to watch the talk and it will uh, blow your mind. Uh, the conference, uh, you, you see the talks, you, get, but you can also see the videos. Uh, the sprints are a really good way to improve your knowledge or to participate to cool projects. And uh, people are maybe the best part of the conference. Uh, Mathieu, our president, wanted me to show you 
short video about sprints regarding Python, uh, the, the PyCon uh, 2013. been to a PyCon Sprint before, um, you should definitely try and, and uh, make sure you stay for the next one. The Sprints are great because they don't just let you put a face to a name, they let you put a person to ideas that you're working with. Uh, sprinting is an excellent way to get everyone, get everyone together, especially new contributors. We have, I think, a half dozen or more people who have already you know, submitted patches, gotten tickets closed out. This has been tremendous for us, and you know, beginners keep you honest about how good your documentation is, about how good your new contributor guidelines are. So we've been really excited to see all of these new people here at PyCon. I'm gonna rush out there because there's a lot of code to do. See you later. Just as a conclusion, uh, you have 51 videos on pyvideo.org. Everything was recorded except for tutorials. Uh, you can submit a talk to PyCon US, sub, uh, buy a ticket, um, sign in for a tutorial or sprint. PyCon Canada is going to happen again. We won't uh, let them uh, just go away with one. We want another one. And here in Montreal, PyCon North America, you can start to prepare yourself. It's going. The bar is really high from PyCon and PyCon Canada, and we can do as good, thanks to you. Thank you.